Hi, I'm Joe and welcome to the channel. In this tone chasing series, I like to go after a specific guitar tone, either of an artist or a song or a genre of music. These usually accompany my Inspired By series and I recently did one on Muscle Shoals. So this video is going to be all about how I came up with that guitar sound. Let's go ahead now and jump into the computer and I'll get started breaking down this tone. All right, folks, here we go. Another tone chasing series. This time we're going after the sounds of Muscle Shoals. Um, if you're not familiar with this music, this was just an incredible group of studio musicians in Alabama that played on countless songs. I mean, just incredible hit songs. Um, I'm sure that you definitely heard their work if you're not familiar with who they are. But do yourself a favor. Look up these folks. Look up the Muscle Shoals rhythm section. Get familiar with their work. I mean, you can see some of their associate acts over here. Aretha Franklin, Wilson Pickett. Um, Percy Sledge, and the list really goes on and on. Um, I'm kind of zoning in a little bit for this tone chasing series on Jimmy Johnson, who was one of the Swampers. The Swampers was the kind of the group of the, or I should say the name of the rhythm section um, that played on tons of these hit songs um, back in the day. Um, again, Aretha Franklin played there, things of that nature. If you're not familiar with the Swampers, they actually make a appearance in the song Sweet Home Alabama where they talk about Muscle Shoals and the Swampers and how they know how to pick a song or two, and, and that is so true. So first step when we're looking to do some tone chasing is obviously pick, pick a song, you know, pick a, a sound that you're going for. And in this case here, I didn't really pick a specific song, but I really do love this album by Etta James called Tell Mama that she recorded in Muscle Shoals. Um, and it was recorded in the Fame Studios um, back there. And... Why I love this album so much is I, I first heard this song, I'd Rather Go Blind, actually recorded by Rod Stewart and Ron Wood. Um, and I believe they did that in Muscle Shoals as well, but it's one of my all-time favorite songs. If you're not familiar with that song, please, please look it up. It's just a fantastic song. So looking here, um, I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, who played on this thing? Um, and so I started doing a little bit of research, um, which is now our next step, right? The next step, first of all, first step one, we pick a song, pick a tone that we're going after. Next step is we're going to do some research. So let's look a little bit into Jimmy Johnson and see kind of like what kind of gear did he play and things of that nature. Um, well, you can see here, I was scrolling through and I can see in the 60s, he definitely played on the Tell Mama album. So I'm going to assume that the sound that I'm going after is Jimmy Johnson. With that said, I do know I've been watching some interviews with him and he told us in one interview that I'll show you a clip of in a second here. Um, but on a different part of, regarding his amp. But anyway, in that interview, he talks about how in some sessions, they actually had up to three guitar players, which is just mind-blowing to me. I mean, if you listen to the arrangements of these songs, it's just masterfully done. No one's ever stepping on anyone's toes. It's just fantastic. Anyway, um, Jimmy Johnson, this guy, in, look at this, tons and tons and tons of just hit songs that he played on. Just an incredible player. So again, maybe if you're not familiar with this, um, with this, with the Swampers and with Jimmy Johnson, please do yourself a favor and look up some of these these songs. Just amazing. Look, the, the list goes on and on. Just amazing, amazing stuff. So, digging a little bit deeper, what kind of instruments did he play? Well, in an interview, again, I was reading that he mainly started out with this Gretsch guitar. It was a Chet Atkins model that he really loved a lot. And I'm not sure if something happened to it or whatever, but one of his fellow bandmates told him to invest in and look at getting a Telecaster, and that's exactly what he did. So to my ears, I believe on the Tell Mom album, especially for the ballads, and that's the kind of the tone I was going after was the ballads side of that album, I really believe it was a Telecaster. Okay, so now we have the guitar. We know about the player a little bit. We know about the guitar, but what's the amp? I came across this wonderful, wonderful interview that True Tone did on Jimmy Johnson. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, please take a look at this. It's just great just to hear him talk and reminisce about all the hit songs that he played on. But he also gets into his gear. And I'm just so thankful that um, people took time to document this doing this interview. Um, Jimmy has since passed away. I believe it was 2019 he passed away. But it was just great to be able to see this. Um, and again, that someone took the time to archive his memories in this video. It's really great. Anyway, um, we're going to hear the question, what about an amp? What about amps? Uh, it looks My like... My favorite amp is always a, a Vibrolux, okay. Fender Vibrolux. Yeah. yeah. The reason is, 
I like the two tens, mm-hmm. and I, I also like six L sixes, and work. not six V sixes. Yeah. Uh, the deluxe amps, you know, they look the same, right? But they didn't have quite the power, right? And because they wasn't six L six, right? The six L sixes have more uh, five eight eight one. Yeah. See, they, one, you know, they have more low industrial end. number. Yeah. Was it because I of the low end and the wide the 5881 then I'd replace all the 6L6. Because they were more stout, yeah. stronger. Yeah. Yeah. So so Vibrolux and a Telecaster. That was that was kind of your rig. <laughs> and it, I love that. I love that. There's no pedals involved here, folks. I mean this guy is just plugging directly in to his fender amp. I'm using the tremolo circuit that's on there, the Verado channel. Just love this idea, right? No pedals, <laughs> plug straight into the amp, and he's getting these incredible guitar tones. So looking a little bit, you know, what is this Vibrolux amp that he's talking about here? Um, again, it's a kind of a clean Fender amp. And did you pick up what he said? He liked the 210s. So we're starting to get a little bit more of an idea of kind of the, the speakers that were used, again, the amp that was used. And... Um, and anything else that we can garner from this. Uh, what was interesting is I talked to one of my friends who actually has a Vibrolux amp, and he just he repaired it recently. I believe his is a 72 that he got. So I think it's the similar circuit um, to this Vibrolux amp that he was using. I'm going to guess that it was like you know, a 60s amp that Jimmy was using. Anyway, um, he told me something actually very interesting when he fixed it, that he realized that... Um, that the tremolo comes after the reverb, and that's how the amp is configured. You know, it's interesting, you know, I come from a little bit of a pedal platform. I have um, one of those Strymon flints, and, you know, that has reverb in it and the tremolo, and obviously I'm putting that in front of my amp, right, because it's a pedal. Um, but it was interesting to learn this little fact here where the tremolo comes after the reverb. So when I'm thinking about this, again, I'm just trying to gather all this information in my research phase, then I looked a little bit about at the studio. You know, where were they recording at? We we saw that that album was cut um, at the Fame Studios, and um, and just digging a little bit deeper, I found some really good articles around Muscle Shoals and how they recorded things. One thing that kind of stood out to me a little bit was um, apparently in the basement they had two echo chambers um, where they would create kind of the reverb and the delay effect happening in there, just basically using a speaker and a microphone and kind of moving it back and forth to give the, the, the different, um, I guess, decay, if you will, of the reverb. So I just found that fascinating. You know, we're so spoiled with our dolls. We can jump into a reverb or a delay and sync it to the, uh, track and all that fun stuff. These guys were actually (laughs) physically moving something to get things in sync with the recording or just to have the level of kind of depth that they wanted. Um, with the reverb in their recordings. And so going to the Fame Studio website, let's learn a little bit about the equipment that we're, that they have here. Now, why am I doing this? Why am I, I mean, I'm just going after a guitar tone though, right? You know, why am I going the extra step to research the studio? Well, I'm doing that because you have to realize the sound that we're hearing when we're listening to these great records and this tone is their process sounds, their recorded sounds. We're not in the same room with Jimmy where he, you know he's just going to plug into his amp and he's going to play and we're going to hear that. We're actually hearing that sound through the console, the console of the recording console. Recording, oh my gosh, that sound <laughs> through the recording console. Thank you. That took me a while to get there. Um... And, and we're hearing it processed, so there's obviously outboard gear happening. There's um, compressors on there. Um, there's this reverb channel on there. There's most, most likely some sort of room bleed and things of that nature that we're hearing that we have to take that into consideration kind of when we're going after these tones. So looking at their studios um, and their equipment gear that they have, I was trying to figure out, you know, what kind of mic maybe were they using? Um, it looks like they probably were using maybe these... Uh, these Newman mics, uh, I'm good. I went with I think a, a 67 instead of the 87. The 87 sound a little bit um, brighter to me, so I went with just the 67. But look, lo and behold, there's the 68 Fender Vibrolux amp. I'm assuming that they still kind of have that here. So anyway, that was the next step. You know, obviously was doing the research 
again, we're looking at the player, we're looking at the guitar, we're looking at any amps and effects that they might be using, and we also dove in a little bit into the studio. So the next step in this process is go ahead and pick your platform. How are you going to recreate these sounds? Are you going to do it with like your own amp and some pedals? Are you going to do it with some modeling software that's kind of built maybe into your DAW? In this case here, I chose to go with the Line 6 um, Stomp that I generally always use because it's so fun to, to have an, a device like this. This is not a paid video by any chance. This is my own gear. I just want to state that. But it's great to have gear like this because I can experiment and play with all these different things. Sure, it's not a real amp. It doesn't behave um, that way. But you know, it gets you pretty close, especially for the recordings. And again, it's fun to experiment um, with it. So I was looking at the list here of amps, and I'm looking for my Vibrolux. Well, guess what, folks? <laughs> It isn't in here. <laughs> I don't have one um, on here, so I can't choose that. So I kind of went with this US Double, um, which is obviously a twin, and I went for the vibrato channel. I figured that might be close enough to kind of get us on the ballpark. You know, we can't, again, expect to nail these tones 100%, um, but it's fun just to experiment and try. So I went with that. Um, I also looked for a tremolo circuit that we might be able to use uh, on there, and... I was I found um, there's an optical trem that's kind of found I would say more in the deluxe reverb um, amp by Fender. So I went with this actually this bias trem, which I'm assuming is more of a tube based tremolo. Um, even though it's for a Vox amp, I went for it for this this matching as well. So I figured that got me close. And then for the um, if you listen to the inspired by song that I did for this, I tried to do guitar parts that were simulating an organ sound. Um, and because of that, then I kind of went with um, one of the rotary uh, models uh, to get kind of that organ type of sound with the guitar. So that was it. I picked my, uh, my equipment that I was going after um, inside of my, you know, my, my, uh, my stomp here. And I started getting to work. So let's go ahead and grab a guitar. And we'll see what kind of tones that I came up with and how I built the sound. Okay, so jumping into the software here, clearly, again, I picked that um, twin, but the vibrato channel. I have some moderate drive on here. It's just enough that it, it'll break up if you hit hard enough. It's breaking up. But for the delicate parts, it really cleans up well. So that's where I kind of started with the drive. Kind of kept the bass lower, and I pushed the mids and the treble. If you listen to the recordings that are on that album, um, it is more of a, a trebular, trebular, <laughs> more of a treble sound um, than a mid-range sound, to my ears at least, and there's not too much bass happening there. So that's where we kind of went with. And remember, we saw that they were talking about, or Jimmy was talking about, he loved the 210s, right? Well, I was looking, and I don't really have inside of the stump um, a 210 cabinet. So what do you do, right? So this is where you kind of do some, some uh, substituting and try to make smart choices. I know for a fact, right, they recorded this. So there was an amp on that. Uh, I mean, there was a mic on that amp. And because of that, I figured, well, why don't we just go for the 110? Right? I mean, if you think about it, I'm putting a mic on top of the, the cabinet. I'm only really technically miking one speaker. Yes, there might be some bleed, I would imagine, from the second speaker. But, for, for again, I don't have a 210, so I had to compromise a little bit. So I went with that. I went for the 110. And, again, I went with the 67 instead of the 87 mic. And I pulled it back a little bit. I just gave it a little bit of um, a distance from the speaker itself. And I did a little bit of an early ref ref reflection um, on the sound. So again, this is kind of the bass sound. I just have something very basic. Now, I went ahead and I added that tremolo that we talked about. And if you noticed, I sandwiched it in between two reverbs. Well, why do I have two reverbs? Well, I'll get to that in a second here. But let's first look at the, um, the first reverb here which will be the spring reverb. You know, I'm assuming, obviously, this Fender amp had a spring reverb. That's kind of their thing. So I put on a little bit of a spring reverb on here. Nothing too crazy. Just a little bit of a trail. And then 
after the reverb, I went ahead and I put that, that trem on there. So now we're getting that little bit of the sound happening. <laughs> So now we have that going, and that's really great. Well, remember what we, we heard, um, or actually what we saw in doing our research, that they were using echo chambers. So after my initial reverb, which is the spring reverb, and then going into the trem, I went ahead and I added a chamber to this. So now we're getting a little bit more of a, of a decay you can hear of this, and it kind of hopefully puts us in that space. So just a nice little lush sound and I was really surprised how well this fit into the mix. So again, I always find something interesting and fascinating when I do these tone chasing things, something that I learned and I just love the idea of having the trem after the, um, the reverb, the tremolo after the first reverb but then following it up as if it was recorded, and I'm using an echo chamber to kind of smooth things out. And again, it, I felt like it sat really nice inside the mix. I then just put a basic little EQ on here just to clean things up just a little bit, just to make things a little crispier, I guess, for lack of a better word. And that's really kind of the general bass sound that I have going on. And again, like I talked about earlier, I, I turned this tremolo off and I used this rotary um, vibe thing to get more of the um, sound. So I got more of the, um, the organ type of sound with this. So that's it. Again, a very straightforward, clean sound. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download this from my website and fiddle with it some more. But it's a great sound to have, especially for these older type 60 ballads. I found it very versatile, and you know what? It was also humbling. I got to tell you, you know, we're not hiding behind anything like any distortions or overdrives for our sound, and just to play things smooth and even volume um, was just really challenging just to be plugged directly into an amp. I think it was actually um, a great learning experience. So if you haven't done that before, maybe just turn off all of your effects and just plug directly into an amp and... Uh, Go to town on getting your tone sounding good there first before you add anything else. That's another video down for this tone chasing series. If you have a suggestion for a tone you might like me to chase after, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to see your ideas. And while you're down there, if you found any value in this video whatsoever, please do me a favor and consider supporting the channel for free by subscribing down below, hit the like button, and knock on the bell and you'll be notified when the next video comes out. As always, I wish you a wonderful day.